So we go with a monoball bushing. We are a fan of monoballs here. It takes out the slime. <laughs> you know, like, I'm on them all the world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it, you know, they have their key places. Putting this monoball bushing in in the chassis at this location, it's not going to wreck your ride. Don't listen to everybody that's telling you, you know, oh, monoballs are for race cars and, and all this other kind of stuff. Yes, they are for race cars. But when used properly, installed properly, they can be used on the street very successfully. And just the precision, the feel, you cannot replicate that with anything other than a spherical or monoball bushing. Back again, out here in Connecticut, stopping by Bootsy Gear. I don't know if you guys remember in the, one of the previous videos, they had an RWV build here not too long ago. It was Justin's car, that Silver 993, which was sick. It's actually inside. Dave has my car. We're doing the suspension upgrades, um, a lot of stuff that needed to kind of be dialed in. We're like a week out from the RWB build, so I'm kind of getting like the final touches put together. But I really want to bring the car up here to Dave because he's really good with the suspension stuff. And he's good. We're going to go inside. We're going to do a quick tour, but we're going to go inside and talk to Dave. Dave's going to go through the whole suspension process and the things that he's doing with my car. And um, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see how this car drives and feels. But uh, yo, I'm excited, man. The build, like I said, it's a week away. So getting the final touches in, but let's head inside and we'll talk to Dave, see what he's doing to my car. You do everything in the back of these cars. I know. You don't do these. It, it's, yeah. Oh, I can't it's wait to see how this car feels, man. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I got a secret love for these cars, the, the 996 C4 SSD. And I think, maybe maybe you could hold me to this, but I think these are the low-key sleeper, like, these cars are going to go up in value. I mean, you could get them for a reasonable price now, but it's something about the wide body on the, on the 4S, on the 996, it just looks good. You put some wheels on it with a drop, it just, it looks really good. So these are the cars to look out for. I think these are going to be really, they're going to be something in the future. I mean, they're already something now, but, but Justin's um, 993 is sick too. This is the car that I got built um, back in February. Uh, I'm not sure what Dave is doing to it right now. I guess we could ask him, but dude, this is pretty sick. That's Dave's personal 996 GT3 up there. That's sick. It's almost like, I guess like, you could say it's basically like a cup car. Interior is gutted out. Everything is gutted out. This is like, like a real track spec 996 GT3. I wonder how much that thing weighs. I gotta ask Dave. That's, this is crazy too. We're gonna ask Dave to talk about that, but that's uh, that's Greg's car. And that's actually a 964 with a 993 GT2. Well, it's a 993 body on it with a GT2 kit on it from the 993 GT2. So it looks like a 993 GT2. Dude, that, that motor's built. It's, it's turbocharged, I believe twin turbo with an air to water uh, in the cooler system. You can ask Dave about it, but I'm familiar with that system. I considered doing that. Cool guy, Tyler, Tyler from California. He's uh, with Canepa. And that's his uh, personal system that he started making. And it's like a ITB system that is very like modular that you could decide to run boost on it and stuff like that. And it's, it's pretty sick. I think they're shooting for like a thousand horsepower in this thing. See the, see the, see the turbos peeking out the, the bottom. I mean, look at all these gems you walking around in here. 993 4S, 964 Carrera 4, and oh, nice one. Look at this. I wonder if that's going to be a resto. Got to ask Dave about that. And then, of course, you see my baby on the lift getting the suspension done. But let's go chat with Dave. Let's go figure out what's, let's go see what he's doing. Oh, so we got Dave, man. <coughs> What's Dave, up, man? Thanks hey, for having man. me again. Thanks wow. for taking my car in last second. I know hey. you're used to this because even with Justin's car, you... we knew <laughs> that it was going to be what it's going to be. Right, you know, right. It's always a push. The car had to come from the West Coast, go to Porsche, Englewood to do what they had to do. And here we are. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm just happy to be involved. And 
I mean, uh, you know, get our little our little segment done and this is this is typical, this is normal RWB fashion. Yes. Everybody, it's always like the final crunch in the like the last hour of getting these cards together before Nakai shows yep. up. I well, know you had lot, it with There's a lot Justin. to do, man. Yeah, there's a lot, lot to do. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> I needed I needed my suspension touched up, man. Big time. Uh, you know, I told you I wanted the, the car to handle like, I wanted it right. to be amazing, you know? Yep. Coming from the RS and stuff like that, I was just like, I want something that feels something similar. Yep. So I came to you. I saw yep. everything that you did here when yep. you had Justin's build. Yep. And um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm happy that you're working on it. So I guess if you want to give the, the people at home a rundown of everything that you're doing, sure. especially talk about the suspension stuff and we why. Had a, we had a nice lineup of parts. Uh, we actually started, you know, doing this because we couldn't wait yeah. to uh, to film. But basically, um, I can walk all you guys through the chassis and and kind of where things go and whatnot. Uh, we got a little bit of time. I yeah, could be yeah. long winded. So yeah. Uh, but I definitely want to, you know, kind of walk everybody through people that have 993s. You know, this is really informational and uh, important for people to understand about these chassis because they are very different than the earlier air cooled chassis and how the suspension is uh, is basically bolted to the chassis, what that means, and you know how they feel and so forth. So we always try to get them to feel a little more. I don't want to say modern, but just more connected to the driver. And yeah. there's things that you can do to, to make that happen for responsiveness, feel, and, and just enjoyment. I'm, and I'm huge on that. I'm huge on so. that. Especially after having the 991, the 3RS. Yep. I love the feedback. I love the precise, like how, how sharp that car is, how precise it is. Yep. And even with my previous 993, I did like minor things. I, I did, you know, I had KW coils. I did some bushings, but like poly, nothing major. Yep. And um, even that felt really good. Yeah. No, but no, I knew there was always more. Those was, are all the right things. Yeah. I mean, like you did all the right things. There's also levels of things you can do. And with this, we're taking it just a bit further than right. That's that. What I yep. um, and kind of in typical Porsche RS fashion, uh, we're just basically doing what the factory does for their RSs and cup cars. You yeah. Know, so. so one of the biggest things I want to point out too, when I, I had the 991 GT3 first, which was the white card, and then I went to the RS and a lot of people were, you know, were telling me that it, you don't need to upgrade to RS and which is true. I'm not trying. I wasn't tracking the car or anything like that. And I almost kind of talked myself out of it because I thought, listen, I didn't want to pay that extra money just for like arrow, just for the looks. Right. But then when I drove a RS, I immediately felt the difference between the GT3 and the RS. And the reason why is because you transition to the monoball bushings and yes. all this other stuff. Yep. And I fell in love. And ever since then, and then, you know, you would watch reviews. People would say it's too stiff. And, yeah. you know, I love the way it's the car subjective. felt. It's subjective. Yeah, it's subjective. Exactly. Do not go for what other people are telling you when it comes to these cars. You have to drive on yourself, live, live with one yourself to really understand. Yep. But even with the carbon buckets and even with it being an RS and the monoboard bushes and everything, the car was comfortable to me. Yeah. You're going wide with the RWB kit, more grip. I mean... You, you need more uh, or less deflection and more kind of rigidity in the right. chassis because... I, I always explain it like, oh, subframe bushings, the subframe is moving underneath the chassis. But I think when we get under there and I can kind of demonstrate that because the you know grip and the forces, that's what basically is happening is basically your body and where you're sitting in the car, if you're turning right, you know, you're you're loading the car, the the wheels wanna stay and turn you, I'm saying right, left. Yeah, yeah. But the body the body just wants to keep going that way. That's right. just physics, yes, you know? Yeah. And the only thing that's keeping you there is the traction and grip in the tires and your suspension. And that's your subframe trying to stay this way. Now, if you have rubber between those two, you literally have rubber trying to keep the body turning to the right, left. Right. If your solid connection is aluminum, like we'll see here, and you take that rubber out of the system, then literally it's just nice and sharp and you're connected. Yeah, yeah. It's the connection to the road. So basically, I, bought, I, I dropped off I have, the parts. Okay, perfect. I got the parts so we got those here. control arms there. Yeah. Hansi, we got an old uh, subframe bushing, minus one, because I threw it in the garbage yesterday. <laughs> yeah, right where it belongs. It. Yeah. Oh man. Dude, you gotta see. No it. way, dude. So you talk about deflection. All right, let, let's, let's, we'll go back over here. These are your factory. Um, 993 subframe bushings. Uh, basically, these are pressed into the upper side of the subframe here and here. So these would basically be sitting 
Oh, gotcha. In the aluminum like this. Don't mind this. This is how we get them out without dropping the whole subframe and pressing and stuff. We use an air hammer. Oh, okay. You know, you might want to judge us on that or whatever, but <laughs> it's saving our clients some money and it's not really a, uh, yeah, and a you shortcut. And, and you're throwing you know it away. I mean? it's, not like it, not... it's garbage. Yeah, it's garbage. But no, these are in, in here. And what happens is all of your suspension and our lower arms are out right now, so you can't really see it, but all of your suspension points. So these arms, and then there's an arm that goes down here that connects to this point. When you have your wheel in here and the, the car is taking force and load, basically all of the force is being pushed on this subframe. Yeah. If the subframe is held and you can even just see here, like these are kind of petrified, but if, if when these are in, we pry these to, to check them and literally you can see the play, you can see the play, here. but even looking at this, when this bushing is new, these spaces are even, and you can see the deflection over time of what happened here is that the, the subframe has settled yeah. into a spot. It's like, it's like. It's like wearing a shoe and, and, and breaking it in. Yeah. <laughs> it's like then, an old shoe you walk in. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then you break your ankle. You're like, yo, I need new shoes. Yeah. I'm, I'm tired of spraining my yeah. ankle. So another kind of, you know, thing here is these old rubber bushings. This is the one that was installed on that side by the oil tank and where you're filling your oil, the oil fill side. Um, sometimes when you're servicing these cars, you can spill some oil. Oil is horrible for rubber. So what you see here is literally just degradation of the rubber from oil spilling on it for years. We replace these with aluminum, um, basically again, to bring that rigidity to the connection of the subframe and the chassis, which is connecting basically all of your suspension, your wheels and everything yeah. right to the chassis so that there's no play or, or movement under the car itself or under your butt. Would you say, would you say that's one of the biggest things you should do is the sub yeah the so sub i mean push. these older porsches basically they need a lot they need all of these bushings and a lot of suspension attention and other things but when you're talking about chassis yeah. 993 i would say like the top three things that i can say are subframe bushings and start with those especially in the rear that is your connection yeah. to the chassis then lower control arms lower control arms we have found have worn the ball joints on the outside here, the connection, well, not ball joint, but the connection here and the connection at the uh, the other suspension points, uh, those bushings get worn and torn and there's a lot of wear and tear on those. And then it's similar to the rear, the front control arms, which I will walk you guys through Yeah, those as well. Those front control arm bushings are notorious to wear and you will get slight anything from slight vibration in the steering wheel, which you think is um, wheel weight or balance, then you spend the time to pull the wheels, have them balance and everything, road force and, yeah. and go through all this stuff and you still have this little thing, it's likely your control arm bushings. So gotcha. get those taken care of. Low control arms? I mean, if you, if, oh, if, wow, if, look if, at that. if you literally do this, this is made to move, but if you just do the slightest, you're not going to be able to pick it up. But if you just literally the slightest movement, movement you, you yeah. do it. Feel the clicking. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah. you can feel it in the arm. Yeah. You could that is play in the bushing that's in here. It's happening similarly here. And also, you know, this joint here, this one actually is pretty, is pretty tight, but these are also getting a workout because every time this is moving, it's this moving. is also moving. Yeah. And that's literally just going down the road. Your suspension is always moving. These are getting beat, you know? Wow. So this is an old one. We can show you a new one um, that was that supplied was from uh, Porsche Englewood. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Uh, this is a new control arm, new rear lower control arm for the 993 supplied by Porsche Englewood, Porsche Englewood yep. where yep. these builds will be happening. You can upgrade to an aftermarket performance based arm or go with an RS arm that has even higher uh, durometer rubber and uh, bushings. But coming from what you have in a worn 993, um, even a car with 13,000 miles that's old is going to need control arms because just the rubber just degrades over time. So right. it's something that would have to be inspected. It's not just like a right. sell everybody everything so that, you know, you have to do an inspection. But more than likely, if the car is older, you're going to need to replace these lower control arms. You know, this is an old arm. This one, actually, if you look 
here. This was actually being damaged by a sway link yes. that had slipped on the coilover and was literally sawing the arm in half. So this is all stuff that when you have a car in the shop, you go through and you look at every car, you know, very carefully just yeah. to see if there's anything out of the ordinary. Like I would never expect to see this but it's something that you have to be vigilant and look at pieces and fitment of things, especially cars that are modified so that, you know, you're not sawing a control arm in half on yeah. a client's car. So yeah. basically new replacement arm. And then we go to the tow link in the rear. This sits in the car and basically attaches the lower subframe and chassis to the wheel carrier. And this uses an eccentric, to basically set tow. This was just blown out. A lot of these actually get damaged when some people are doing suspension. Um, they stick a pickle fork in here and try to remove oh, and yeah. it's just not a proper process. I don't know why this looks like this. It could literally just be blown out because it's old. This is old, um, yeah. But again, bad loose joint. So we get rid of this. I mean, you have to remember the car, it's a 30 year old car. Man. Oh yeah. You know, well, so that's the thing is they're all 30 year old right, cars. Exactly. And they all need the same, same stuff, yeah. man, you know? So then we go into, uh, this is an upgraded part. So Porsche OEM or original part. And then this, this is something that we choose to install in any car that we're doing suspension work that I would say any car that we're adjusting ride height. So it could be a lowering spring, could be a coilover, could be going to MO30 suspension. This is very important to us, but in the end to you for tire wear, response, feel, and, and holding that alignment that you paid for, this is, this is key. These parts were supplied by Terrid Engineering. They make amazing stuff. This basically replaces this part here. You can see they, they, they basically look very similar. They achieve the same thing. This one here just does it better. Monoball on this end, so you don't have, this is actually technically a monoball, but this is a more precise spherical bearing. Yeah. So this gives you more precision as well as this other end, eliminating the rubber and adding a spherical end on this side for a very, very solid connection to the chassis. So when we go and adjust this, you can see we have, there's infinite, like I can give you so much tow, you couldn't even drive the car or you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. negative tow, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But the thing is, is that we need that range of adjustability that these allow because depending on the right, right height, height of the car, the yeah. camber and setup of the car, we need to be able to get you proper right. tow and, and, and dial in what we want the car to do. Um, and then also this keeps it there. There's another component here. I can run over there and grab it, but basically instead of using an eccentric, it's a bolt that goes directly through uh, the subframe and solidly attaches this point so that there is no way that it can slip. Mm. And that's what happens on some cars. Yeah. If you're not torquing that, which there is a special tool that you need to torque the stock uh, bolt down. A lot of people aren't doing that. So what happens is on these, if you're using that eccentric, they slip and this can actually change over time. Yeah. So these, we try to lock them in with a tow locking plate again from Terret, um, and, and just a nice solid and very adjustable, smooth, adjustable connection for the 993 awesome. chassis. So the other two important things, uh, besides the lower arm are the upper arms. These are kinematic toe and camber control arms that are on the top of the 993. I can show you the stock version here. Um, so there's one here and one further forward. Again, the stock ones have rubber at this end here and they do have bolts um, and joints on this side. But the more important part and the part that deflects and is a problem is the rubber. Yeah. So. You know, this is this is more movement because the lower arm isn't here. Yeah. But that basically is what we're talking about is like when you're driving, you're getting deflection in that that's yeah. literally causing this to happen. If you know anything about alignments or have seen an alignment done, like you're talking about fractions of millimeters, this just seeing something like minute like this, that's like taking a car from way out of spec to like way past in spec, right. you, you know, you know what right. I'm saying? So, right. you know, that, that is, is super, super important to be able to hold that and lock it in place. Yep. So uh, kinematic toe, kinematic yeah. toe is this one here again, uses this adjuster here. We basically set this to a static point and then adjust from 
the arm because you're getting a way more precise adjustment using that as an adjuster. So that's basically a complete rear suspension refresh. Obviously there'll be a coilover in place. There are adjustable links that we use to dial out preload when we set ride height, and then we can move on to the front. So we're gonna talk about the front end of 964993, very similar, couple of different pieces, technically different part numbers, but essentially the same parts and ideology behind what's going on. So this is a stock 993 front lower control arm. These bushings here, and I'm gonna talk a lot about bushings and stiffness and flex and deflection, but basically stock 993 control arm, stock bushings, these stock bushings, and usually, actually we might be able to even uh, show, but basically you have stock rubber that is on the inside of the bushing that the connection point to the subframe or, or chassis here is through this steel collar. What happens is when this is in the car, it's moving and twisting this rubber. These are stationary and they are actually keyed to the lower front subframe in the vehicle. So basically the control arms mount in this point here and here. And if you look closely, it's kind of hard to see here, but if you look closely, there is a notch oh, yeah, that's see. here. Yep. That part of the arm, and I'll illustrate it again, but that part of the arm actually keys in there. I have seen a lot of cars come through the shop where control arm work has been done and they did not key this notch or this little protrusion into that it gouges the subframe oh, no. causes issues and doesn't hold this still so now you're you're literally like twisting this in the chassis wow um with that as well you know there's a, a specific torque for the bolt that goes through here that's going through aluminum you can tell it, it either hasn't been torqued or if it has been torqued it's torqued incorrectly because this is actually not seated so that's something to watch out for if you are doing control arm work on a 964 or 993 make sure that you put this notch into the notch on the chassis. These bushings, there are other replacements. You can do stock, you can do polyurethane replacements. For us, the work that's involved to get those bushings out and get a, a, a clean surface like this, to be able to put a new bushing in, it's labor intensive. It takes time on the bench, on the vise, drilling out and, and kind of cutting out rubber and then cutting out this inner, technically it's a race on the control arm. This, this thin piece of steel that's around and pressed in is usually corroded to hell in the arm. So we actually, they can be either pushed or cut out. We do both depending on what is required, but it's a lot of work to get these out. So we tend to recommend for that amount of work to put something in there that is worth the effort. So we go with a monoball bushing. We are a fan of monoballs here. It takes out the slum. <laughs> you know, like I'm on all the world, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, it, you know, they have their key places. Putting this monoball bushing in in the chassis at this location, it's not going to wreck your ride. Don't listen to everybody that's telling you, you know, oh, monoballs are for race cars and and all this other kind of stuff. Yes, they are for race cars. But when used properly, installed properly, they can be used on the street very successfully. And just the precision, the feel, you cannot replicate that with anything other than a spherical or monoball bushing. So and, and even when you go into forums too, like I've done extensive research about this. Yep. A lot of people who haven't done it, they'll say they'll have the same fear, like you said. Yeah. It'll be too stiff or whatever. Yep. But then when you see the guys who give feedback who have done it, they're like, Yeah, the car still rides yeah. great. It's they're almost still comfortable. like I mean. Yeah. If, I, if, if, if I didn't tell you that we put monoballs in the car you and be. you're not that in touch with the car, you wouldn't know the difference. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You wouldn't, you wouldn't be like, oh man, ever since I got my car back, it rides harsh. <laughs> you know, yeah. I wonder what they did there. You wouldn't. You'd kind of be like, oh man, this thing handles really well. And you might feel that aspect, but you're not going to go, oh man, I got crazy NVH or, right. or, or harshness from lower control arm bushing. It's not happening. I don't buy that. So these basically... Um, are pressed into the arms and take the place of the rubber bushing. We do use just an, an OEM ball joint to replace the worn ball joint here. Not much to say about a ball joint. Ball joint's a ball joint in a sense. Yeah. Um, these actually feel really? pretty, pretty good. They were probably done at some point. I don't think these are super uh, original, but um, there's, eh, as you move it, it's and it gets it, it gets a little like yeah. it does get a little you know once you start moving it, it around it gets looser but um but again 
you know, they're out, they're on the table, not a crazy expensive part, replace it. So we are replacing the ball joints. The difference that you see between these two arms, basically, this is an original arm with probably 60 to 80,000 miles. This is an arm that just, it's how we do it. They are uh, media blasted, stripped, chem strip media blasted, um, and then they are ceramic clear painted um, to protect the aluminum. And that's giving just that slight satin sheen that you see. I'm not gonna put that back in the car when I can put this back in the car with all this crispy new stuff. Another major component on the front end and needs to be talked about. One, it's not pictured here, it's still in the car. You actually didn't have a problem with it. Steering rack, so 993 steering racks. They are prone to leaks. Yeah, I heard about power that. Power steering leaks, Yeah, you know, they, they do blow seals and have it's, issues. It's, I heard it's normally with cars that don't get driven though. Is that um, true? Oh, well, it could be anyway. Yeah, exactly. Not, not, <laughs> don't a get lot driven. of these cars don't get driven, yeah, but yeah. yes, it can affect cars that are that are uh, not driven. But we've seen it on higher mileage cars, obviously, because they are being driven. But um, I think there is a truth to that that maybe those seals, you know, get kind of dried up or or maybe swollen and do pass power steering fluid out. Wow. Uh, you have the brace that, oh, that it you already were talking has? about. That there was a brace in here. Oh, so the brace was already there. Yep. Brace was oh, here. Nice. And, um, um, and bushing, the bushings, I will have to double check and see if they are a poly or an upgrade, but at least that's there. So what does the brace do exactly? It just the brace basically ties these two points together and to prevent. and and prevents rack kind of not play because if it's torqued and it's it's in there, it should yeah. be good. But it does give some rigidity to the rack and suspension system as you're loading. You know, awesome. all these pieces that you see under here are individual pieces. So yeah. it's subframe, but the subframe are two longitudinals and then you have this transverse piece that's going this way and it all bolts individually to the chassis. Then you have your rack bolting up here with these bolts here. This is to just help stabilize, yeah. stabilize more, <laughs> um, but a stabilization brace um, just to, to help with those flexes. That was something that I, I and I, I, I haven't looked at this in a long time, but that, that was done by Porsche. A lot of 993s, I believe the late Luke, pulling in some knowledge, <laughs> late 993 Luke, actually yeah. came, <laughs> Luke Armshaw, yeah. uh, a lot of 993s actually came with this from the factory as a yeah. factory part. I think it was a late 993s. Somebody's going to beat me up on this. Oh, you should know. Eh, I know a lot, but, <laughs> but you know, you have capacity. Know yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. So we're on a lot of different cars. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. There are aftermarket. This is this looks like a Roth Sport piece, which uh, is a really nice upgrade. They yeah, do they do also have polyurethane bushings that go in here right. to stabilize. Nice. Um, and just a nice addition awesome. for. 200 bucks yeah yeah you know? i think it's worth um, it yeah that's why I, remember I was... and that can also be retrofitted to 964s so i believe porsche did it when cars went to 18 inch wheels i think that's what the yes that's what it was saying yes i think that's what it was going so you go to 18s yeah. there's you know more pressure or, or uh, load placed on this area so porsche in their typical fashion goes hey we got a fix for that let's brace it so um that's it awesome so moving back no steering rack issues with Joe's car. Awesome. But uh, if you have a 993, if you're seeing fluid on the front end of your car, underneath the front end of your car, not the back, like you probably already know is there. <laughs> uh, if you're surprised, like, hey, yeah, I got yeah. an engine in the front, now it's leaking. It's likely your steering rack. And that's something that you would want to bring to Porsche or an independent to take a look at. Racks are incredibly expensive. Yeah. A Porsche yeah. original. <laughs> I know that. Maybe you could talk to Englewood about that if you ever I, need a rack. I know, man. Uh, we, we, do, um, we do rebuild racks. We have a, a service that, that rebuilds them for us. We don't do them in-house. It's one of the few things that we don't do in-house because of time. It's easier to keep going on a chassis, send it out to somebody that we trust that'll do it right, and then get it back and, and put it in place. They clean it not you know not exactly like this and clear coating it but they are right. cleaned and serviced and and uh, rebuilt awesome. um, and they don't leak when you put them back in so that's the whole point so we covered racks we go now to tie rods inner and outer tie rods you see two inner outer tie rod assemblies here this is a stock version this is a, a part available from Terret. I believe they are manufactured by ERP, Eisen Laurel Racing uh, Products. Amazing machining, engineering, and parts. We use them 
pretty much exclusively for a lot of the things. If you remember going back to the rear, those upper kinematic toe and camber control arms, those are also ERP parts. And then moving forward to these, they do use some of the highest grade ends and just the machining and the quality of these uh, are amazing. The benefit, and you can see there's some stuff that's different here compared to this one. So you have a bump steer correcting tie rod and a stock tie rod. Um, these are basically doing the same thing, connecting at the rack at one end. This would actually be going into an RS style inner like this. So what we're really looking at here is, is this, right? So this goes into here. Yeah. This is your adjustment point. And then this here, the bump steer correction comes from this spacer here. Oh, wow. um, so basically yeah, yeah. what that is doing is adjusting the height of the spindle to closer match this angle when it is installed with the control arm. So when you lower the vehicle, basically your, your control arm is getting lower towards the chassis like this. When you have a stock placement tie rod, the, the angle, you always want these to be acting at a similar angle. What can happen is if you're not adjusting and making an adjustment, then what happens is you need this to basically be corrected. This angle needs to be corrected. So what you're doing is you're installing this piece. This is like up here like this and your control arm is down like this. Yeah. So what you're trying to do is just correct the angle. You can't really correct. I mean, you could correct the control arm, but it's not typically done that way. Yeah. It is done at the uh, the tie rod. Yeah. Um, so the big question is, um, bump steer kit, is that necessary or? Um, so it depends on how much you're lowering the car, what suspension values and and and, and uh, alignment settings you're going to be running with the car. Um, the use of the car, you know, I would say anytime you're adjusting a ride height, I don't want to say dramatically, but if you're adjusting the ride height, technically there should be adjustments made for the other suspension components, you know, in race cars, you know, a lot of times they're actually raising subframes, you know, to, to, to correct for the geometry that's going on with the oh, control arms. Is, that, like, is that like similar? You know, like, when you lower a car, yeah. you know, you're literally, yeah. you know, you're you're at a crazy angle with the control arm. So if it bolts here, what they may do is actually raise the the bolt, you know, the, the attachment point to the chassis to keep this pretty level to the ground. Right, right. You know, the, the rule of thumb is really you want your your wishbones or control arms as parallel to the ground in most setups. Um, is, is that, that why you know, if you go look under my cup car right now, yeah. like the control arms are literally like this in the rear and that kind of blows my mind because it's, it's technically not correct, but whatever they did with that, it was factored into the engineering and they, they do actually raise the subframe. We actually have a 993 outside that we did raise the subframe because it's running a very aggressive ride height. Yeah, yeah. So we raised the rear subframe, uh, I believe it's 10 millimeters to help take up some of that and help with bump steer. Gotcha, roof, you know? gotcha. So, is that also why people do like the RS like uprights and RS stuff? uprights correct a lot. So they yeah. are correcting uh, some of that height that, factor, that geometry of and of, geometry yeah. more so bump steer inherently, but also just better um, camber and toe curves. So as the wheels moving up and down, what is it doing like dynamically yeah. and controlling those? Gotcha. Um, those values. So um, I guess to sum it up, and I know this is what he wants to hear, um, are these necessary for every car that's lowered? I think textbook, the textbook answer for that is probably yes, if lowered to a certain point beyond where the stock tie rod can articulate and not produce bump steer. We usually use them in cars that are more track focused or you know, really low ride height or yeah. something that we just literally want to tick all those boxes and right. totally transform this compared to your, like these guys, the, you know, <laughs> the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. that is going to be leaps and bounds. Yeah. Different. Uh, yeah, in, in improvement. Improvement, yeah. And we can always add Upgrade. these later. Yeah. You know, that's the other thing to remember is like, you could throw a catalog at a car or a full package at a car. 
it's expensive to do so. So it's not really cutting corners. If you are replacing a, a worn used, you know, worn tie rod with a new setup, that's not cutting corners. That is, you know, maintaining and properly maintaining and, and, and maybe not upgrading, but maintaining your vehicle. Yeah. And then you can always upgrade later. I told you like drive yeah. it, drive it at the right height that it's at, you See know, wider feel. tires and all that stuff. If you end up getting bump steer off the rip and whatever, Call, you know, yeah, and just, you know, it. just hit us up and, yep. and we'll do them. For people that don't know, like even the RS uprights, just those knuckles from Porsche or anybody, like BBI makes them, Porsche makes them, and ERP then makes them. ERP makes them. Dude, they're three grand yeah. and they're just the if two knuckles. Whole. So that's a huge expense just to get those knuckles. So, you know, I know some people do it. Some people will argue against it or whatever, but that's one of those things where like, like you said, drive the car, see how it feels. If you feel like it's something that you necessarily have to do, then you spend the money on it. But I didn't want to spend three grand on on that yeah. out, off rip because that three grand could have went elsewhere and other suspension sure. components. You got a whole, you right. know, cars are systems. <laughs> right. And each of those systems, especially on, on Porsches in general, you know, 9, 911, 993, 964, whatever generation, each of those systems involves a package of parts that is not cheap. And whether it's OEM and just, you know, original and going back to factory original and killing those miles off of those parts and putting yeah. all fresh stuff or upgrading, it's, it is a costly process, but in the end, you know, it, it all comes together and really makes for an amazing driving experience. So that's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want, man. I, I, well, Luke and I always say that we're, we're kind of mind blown sometimes when cars come into the shop and it's a guy that's had a car for say 10 years, 15 years. He's had the car, um, you know, a, a long time. He's lived in the car and he loves its Porsche, right? Then we drive the car or I'll go for a ride with a customer. And, you know, and, and they're like, hey, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And I'm like, it's, you know, it some it's nice. Yeah, you got, yeah, yeah, you got yeah, yeah. a nice car, but you know, you, you, you hear that or you, you feel that, or did you see that in the wheel or, Hey, you know, when you drive the car, you ever feel like this, like undulation or something going on, like in your hip area. And the guy will go, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's those little things that, you know, over the years we feel and see and can notice. And by correcting and, and doing the things that we do, you make that car just so much better. And it's the and, feedback the and, customers give after yeah, that. It's just like There's guys, I've told you this before, literally, you know, when you leave here, you, you, there's a little intersection. It's the width of a normal road. What's that, 30, 40 feet? In that 30 or 40 feet, like like just pulling off 15 miles an hour in first gear, they go to second. As they go to second, they look over at me and they're like, Dave, like, this, <laughs> this, thing's, this thing's transformed. And I'm like, dude, we're going on a 20 minute ride. Like, yeah, yeah, drive yeah. the car and then give me the feedback. But it's amazing that you feel it in it's 15 stiffly. to 30 feet, I, you know? I, I will say this and people will know this because they've seen this in my previous videos. When I went from the GC3 to the GC3 RS, Within you sit two in that, you blocks. sit in that seat. You sit in the seat. Dude. Like getting in the car, there's a difference. Yes. Yeah. Within two blocks, yes. I felt the difference. Not even two yeah. blocks. Yep. And I felt the difference immediately. Yeah. 100%. And I was like, yeah. And it's got nothing to do with power or the sound or yep. anything. It's literally your your touch points. You, you know, what you're feeling in yep. the steering, what your your hips are feeling in the seat, you know, maybe even response and pedals. Um, it's all those things yeah, that man. come together. And if you can just tune yourself into those things, driving a 911, especially a properly sorted 911 is, is just bliss. He's not lying. I don't know he's how to lying. explain. I went out Porsche for, guys know, but the guys who don't have Porsches and if you, he's not lying, dude, it's, it's something just different about it. Yeah. And, and I like a lot of cars. I have a lot of cars, but Porsche, there's just something special about yeah. those cars. All right, so now we shot over literally like a few, like it was like walking distance, yeah. right? From Dave's shop. Like quarter so, mile. <laughs> not even, <laughs> we could have walked over here. But yeah, we're over at FCP Euro, man. And this is one of my sponsors and these guys are amazing. And they supplied the coilovers that's going on in the RWB build. We stop over here, we're gonna talk to JR, which is an awesome dude, man. You've probably seen him in a lot of the, the media stuff that you guys see online. JR's gonna give us like a quick rundown of what's going on here. Yeah, I'll let you take it over from here, bro. Yeah, man. Welcome to FCP Euro. Uh, we sell European car parts, of course, for 
basically any you need. So, you know, Joe here needs coilover for his car. We could have easily supplied him with just regular stock suspension, but <laughs> fortunately <laughs> we have awesome options like this to give him. So, I mean, just looking at the catalog side, you know, for Porsche, 911 all the way from air cooled stuff up to you know the cool later water cooled stuff we have a bunch of different performance options like this Bilstein for example and uh Bilstein is also a close partner of ours so it kind of made sense for yeah. me to just offer Joe the Bilstein one because it's a quality coilover you know yeah. made and designed in Germany and two um it's gonna be perfect for the build you know so we'll get the correct stance and also correct performance um these are double adjustable and uh or single adjustable sorry via this bottom adjustment right here and uh also just you know completely weatherproof gonna last mm -hmm. a very long time these are a really nice coilover i mean this is it you ain't even gotta sell it man people yeah know. people know people this know bro. A household name. if you're a porsche guy talking. or european yeah. guy whatever you know bmw's you know what bills i don't know why i'm talking this yeah about this. this is the, you like y'all you, know this <laughs> right thing. yeah they already know they already know but for the people who don't know uh yeah i mean this is this is this is some good stuff in the world of options for you know most cars but 911 specifically you have your kws you have your bill steins um you can kind of trade those back and forth on whatever you think is better right, but both all, of them are all the same level of option for your car so got joe hooked up with these coilovers and really cool uh, really excited to see the car I saw the wheels i know, I know. Uh, oh, last man, I night in one of your posts again thank you thank i'm you, like man. damn that slam down on this on the coilover is gonna look real nice and if i'm not mistaken dave like even on the newer like the water cooled stuff isn't Bilstein's like the factory? Bilstein, yeah, like Bilstein, RS Bilstein stuff like is, that, right? uh, well, it's technically H&R, but H&R uh, struts, as far as I know, and I know in the past, were made by Bilstein. So I think Bilstein is an OEM, uh, original parts yeah. supplier for Porsche. Um, and then H&R, I believe, is making the springs for yeah, Bilstein. So, so they're, yeah. for they're the hand most hand. part, you'll yeah. see a lot of either Eibach or H&R springs. So like a lot of the cup kit options that are not the coilovers will be Eibach springs. And then the coilovers can oftentimes be a toss up between Eibach or H&R Springs. But, gotcha. you know, same level of damper, just matched to a really nice spring. Gerard, mm -hmm. man, you killed it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the sake of the video, I mean, we, we want to take, we would love to have, take a tour, but we're going to have to do that on a separate episode, man. That's, that's yeah, we'll insane. have you back. Oh, yeah, yeah. The door is literally always open. Because, dude, what I'm seeing right now, yeah. I'm kidding the candy store. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, we got it. We definitely got to come back. We definitely got to come back. So Jal promised me that he was going to give us a tour. Absolutely. And um, that's going to be in a, in a video very soon. And we'll take a full tour, see the stuff that they cars, some of the SCP cars like this. Come on, it's like you see this. It's just <laughs> got so much. We got so much to talk about with that. Jr. likes that car. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does a lot of good things, and dude. it makes a lot of great noises. So it's the Safari came in, dude. It's just, come on, you can't. But yeah, we're gonna come back. Um, thank you for Dave for bringing us over here. JR, thank you for the time. Anytime, dude. And, uh, you're going to see him again. Well, you always see this guy online, so. <laughs> JR, awesome, dude. Hey, appreciate <laughs> it. <laughs> thank you. Um, I just want to talk quickly about the other side of the coilover. This again, we alluded to and talked about uh, ERP. These are ERP monoball upper mounts and camber plates. These are a replacement for your stock rubber mounts they offer just more precision in in handling feedback and performance uh, but more importantly you have adjustability here at the top of the shock for camber and also caster correction when installing these pay attention people when installing these there is a notch on the front of the shock uh, the strut uh, mount and camber plate the reason you're installing a camber plate is to achieve more camber. So the, the, the notch here is to face forward on the vehicle, allowing you to be able to sweep and achieve more camber and some caster correction with what is installed here. So they can be installed the opposite way if you are looking to not achieve as much camber. And similarly, stock mounts, this is a little trick that was used. Stock mounts can be done uh, you can do the same thing with stock mounts as well. Um, it was a little racer's trick where they would take a stock mount that is basically, if this was the, the left of the vehicle, uh, the mount would be positioned, the stock mount would be positioned to the outside and you are limited to your camber. Um, when this is installed, or if you were to flip the stock top mount, you would basically achieve negative camber in the vehicle by moving this, the top position of the shock inward. So 
this alleviates having to flip things um, and also just gives you a very easy way at the top of the shock by these three adjusters to be able to achieve camber, but also some caster correction from the top. 964993 also has caster correction at the bottom on the control arm. There's a, a, a big uh, adjuster on the bottom where you can achieve caster. Uh, we still use that, uh, but if we do want to touch up um, or go for a completely custom alignment, we will use the top of the shock. So basically zero out or find a spot at the bottom on the, the control arm itself, set that and then do the actual adjustment here at the top for um, camber and some slight caster correction. So very, very good uh, upgrade for those looking for a more precise RS GT3 or GT3 RS like feel and performance. Um, and also those looking to be able to really finely dial in and adjust camber and caster. So Dave, once again, thank you for the tour. Thank you for even working on my car, taking in my car last minute, especially with literally days before the RWB build. Um, dude, once I came here and I saw you and I met you guys here, when you did Justin's uh, RWB, I, I was like, it felt very like homey here, like, it's you know? So, dude, you know, I can't express enough even for your time right now to even give people sure. the tour. Uh, but dude, this is, I can't thank you enough. So thank you for having thank me. You, I really do appreciate it. And I, like I said, I want to shout out Dave. I want to shout out Bootsy Gear. I want to shout out Tarot. Um, engineering. I want to also shout out FCP uh, Euro. These are all sponsors that's part of this build, that's making this build come together, making it sick as it is. Also, as you guys know, the car's going to be going to SEMA, so to having, like, having a good quality team like you guys behind the car, come on, man. You guys already see how this car's turning out. It's turning out sick from the paint to everything else, to the interior, to the suspension work. You know, you guys, you guys killed it with the suspension stuff, so. <laughs> Can't even. It's not 2020 anymore. No, 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 no. I can't. I even. appreciate, it, man. It's Dude. just it's awesome to be a part of it. To get yeah. This stuff sorted, and just to have you finally out there enjoying it. You know, I can't wait to drive it. I, that, I can't wait to drive that's, it. That's the with, best part. with the wide body and like the, the more grip, and then with the suspension components. Oh, and then there's something coming. There's something in the works. I don't want to announce it yet. Dave know what it is, but there's something big that's going to happen. We're transforming this car, and, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's gonna, it's all gonna tie in together. You guys are gonna be very impressed. So, um, yeah, yeah. But with that, I'm gonna close it out. Dave, thank you once again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Once again, shout out to the sponsors. Like I can't even emphasize that again. I'm gonna say it again. FCP Euro, Tarot, and also Dave with Boosie Gear and his team. So, thank you so much, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Peace.